Now, let's just be clear about something. The idea of there being some sort of traditionalist view of cricket is an absurdity. The fact of the matter is that over the course of the last 400 or so years, ever since the sport was invented, cricket has evolved and changed. It has never stayed the same. It has always been adapting according to our times. The type of cricket that was played by Wisden, or by Bradman, or by W.G. Grace, or by Richie Benno, or by Jack Hobbs, is totally different. And so, there's no point in holding on to some sort of ideal version of cricket that has to be played simply because it's existed for time immemorial. The fact of the matter is that there's no such eternal form of cricket that goes beyond the realms, the realm of history. Cricket is an historical sport grounded in the realities of society. It's not something that goes back to ancient times and goes back to the very nature of humans and the human experience and human nature as if that's some sort of unchanging static phenomenon. And so, the facts are, if you want to change cricket, if you want to adapt it to be something else, you're perfectly free to do that. But the question is, what are the reasons behind this change? Is this being done for the right reasons? Or are we falling down the same death spiral that a lot of other industries are currently as world capitalism heads deeper and deeper into this long-term crisis. And so I can't imagine any good coming out of this situation. The thing that makes cricket a unique sport is the core substantive content of bat versus ball batsmen trying to score runs and bowlers trying to take wickets and so it is the attempt of these two team these two forces combating each other to see who will win which makes cricket a fascinating sport and for a long time the guardian of this great experience was first class cricket because the game is slower because highlights and amazing events are less common it means that the it means that there's more of an emphasis on the slower elements of the game such as concentration such as patience waiting until your enemy is tired and then jumping on them and so those core elements of cricket that make it a unique sport are the very things that make it boring and it's quite a contradiction here. So if you just transformed cricket so that it only existed within the realms of raw emotional experience, which would be boundaries and wickets, then you've actually lost the substance of the game that you're actually playing. It's only through the boring elements of cricket that the exciting elements can have any meaning. And it's only through the boring elements of cricket, the tedious singles and the dot balls and leaving the ball to go to the keeper, it's only through that stuff that the core technical and rational elements of the game can come to the surface and we can see how exciting and professional and amazing this sport is. And so, if cricket was moving in a particular direction which necessitated changing some of the rules and some of the structures and some of the lengths of how games are played, that's perfectly fine. I would welcome it if people said that they wanted first-class cricket to be shifted from four days to three days, 
or limited overs one day games to be shifted from 50 overs to 70 overs that would be perfectly fine if this improves the quality of cricket then I'm all in favour of it but it's quite clear that these people who are proposing cutting test matches to four days remo abandoning 2020 cricket and going to 10, 10 cricket of just ignoring 50 over cricket they do not have the best interests of cricket at hand they are just following the normal pressures of the market that capitalism is driving cricket and they are actually contributing to the death spiral of cricket rather than helping it get out of it and that's of course the key if you want to help pro help keep cricket alive for the next 50 years you have to make sure that it does not continue down the death spiral and that it stays stable and positive into the future like I said before if you have any sort of raw emotional experience it will decrease its effectiveness over time whether you're talking about emotions or drugs or anything else the, uh, the power that it has over your experience decreases over time and so you have to increase and increase and increase it and so if world cricket becomes addicted to the fast and ridiculously short forms of the game then then we will be witnessing the end of the sport. Instead, we have to recognise that for cricket to remain a high-class, uh, professional sport that is admired and respected, that people want to play, it's through the professionality of the actual substantive content that makes this so, which only comes through playing the game in a serious and substantive and core manner and that can only come through actually having the boring elements of cricket there even if they don't have the same net return <laughs>